What's going on guys, Plastic Beach X3 back here with another One Piece commentary video and this time it's going to be another um, Top Cup match from the Madrid-Spain regionals that occurred over the weekend of I believe October 6th, somewhere around there. Um, but it's going to be uh, the top 8 feature match of that tournament. Uh, we're going to see Gabriel, Gabriel um, on the Bonnie, no, 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 no. We're going to see Gabriel on the um, Lucci strategy. So we'll take a look at his deck first. Um, so it's just straight up, obviously, Lucci versus Bonnie. Bad matchup for Bonnie, but we'll see if they can uh, push through to go to top four. Um, we're going to have two of the Spandine, which is like decently normal nowadays, like some like two and three. And then uh, four of the Brook, four of the Suru, two of the Borsalino, three Sabo, four Rebecca. So people playing the Borsalino nowadays. Um, I think that's getting more and more popular as the format goes on. Only three Lucci, which is, uh, I heard a lot of people talking about this too, uh, which is fair enough. Two Hina, which is crazy to me. Haven't seen this card in a while. And then two Who's Who. Um, three of the Tashigi. Yeah, a lot of Navy cards, but they're not on brand new, notably. And they're also not on Spandam, which is kind of wild, which is probably why they have so much room to run all the tech cards. Um, three Jack, two Kaido, kind of similar to how we saw on the top eight uh, Lucci list. And then one Brook, I'm guessing, for like Nami. And it's like also just generically good into a lot of matchups like it was last set. Uh, four Gecko, four of the events, blah, blah, blah. Then we'll get into the Bonnie list from uh, Yusup. Yusup, if I can find it. Unless I just didn't save it. Okay. All right, now we have uh, Yosef's Bonnie list um, for top eight of the Madrid regionals. Uh, vastly different from what we saw over in Mexico's regionals uh, with the winner um, not playing any of the Zoro character and also on the eight drop kid, whereas uh, Yosef here is only playing, is not playing any eight drop kid with two Zoro, four Dofi, three Corazon combined with. Um, Four Carrot, four Bonnie, four Cavendish to always have targets for that thing. And then four Hody, of course. Only three of the Basil Hawkins, which is kind of bonkers to me. I can understand why some people would say to cut this card. But I feel like in the black matchups, it's just so important that I feel like it's not worth it. But, hey, I mean, he did well with it, so it's worth a shot at least, right? And then double searchers as well. Pretty crazy. So, and only eight 2Ks, um, along obviously the four Urogue and stuff. Um, but, yeah. Pretty interesting list. Let's get into the games. Uh, looks like uh, Josip must have placed higher in Swiss, so um, he's able to take. He's able to choose, and he's going to choose to go second. Gabriel's going to pass on one. Josip is going to play double baby five searcher and pass turn. We're going to see a five swing mill two. Hit a brook and a luchi. Take it, no trigger. Interesting. And then just a Tashigi pass turn, okay. Uh, so obviously gonna activate this baby five. Bruh. Okay, activate, I'm gonna activate the baby five. Um, take a 2k counter. Gonna activate the other baby five. Take the Do Flamingo. Fair enough. Gonna swing six. Hold up a Dawn for leader ability to tap this Tashigi. If need be, pass turn. Gabriel's actually gonna take that one as well, so um, both players going down to four life. Let's see a pretty cracked hand. Gabriel's side of things. Double Gecko, Ice Age. He's going to go five into one of the baby fives and minus the other baby five. Going to use the leader ability to tap the Tshishigi. Going to kill the baby five. Milled a Kaido there.
Tap four for the Rebecca. Rebecca played Brooke. Brooke popped the other baby five. And pass turn. So interesting to see what they do on uh, six Dawn here. They could definitely play like the carrot I saw on their hand. So they're gonna actually swing into the Brook. I assume this draws out a block by the Rebecca. And then I think, yeah, so they're just gonna carrot the Brook. So it's gonna freeze it for the turn, pass turn. Gabriel goes to seven dawn turn here. He can like Ice Age, Luchi this thing. Um, could even Tashigi it. Make it go down to three and then two with leader ability, then Ice Age it, or not have to Ice Age it. So that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna Tashigi tap the, uh, or tap itself to minus two cost to the carrot, making it a three cost and then gonna swing five with leader, mill two and then minus one to the carrot making it a two cost. Nothing to use the leader ability on, but they're just gonna give him a 1K, Bonnie. Yep, and there's the Luchi, just to get this carrot off the field, it could be a, a big annoyance if it sticks around. But also, you know, Luchi's Luchi is going to kill whatever you put on the field. And it's going to pass with three Dawn up. Yes, okay. Interesting. Could have potentially swung eight at life if you really wanted to get that life off. I'm not sure how pivotal that is to the strategy, but you know, in my head it seems good just because like, especially if I know that they're not on the eight drop kid, it seems pretty good to swing eight at life there, but uh, they're going to swing six into the brook and then just play their three of Basil Hawkins. Pretty good card. Um, against the Luchi strategy. Gabriel's gonna go to eight Dawn and this, bruh. and this Hawkins is going to prove a problem for his Gecko turn. I'm not gonna get a ton of value off of this Gecko uh, simply because like you just cannot kill this thing with how the board is currently situated. I mean, maybe, no. simply cannot there's a way like maybe you can like be really cheeky and like fill up your board retire like swing with your board and then like i don't know i'm thinking of like a spandam spandam and then spandine no you wouldn't be able to do that either because you could just tap one of the spandams but anyway he's gonna go five into life uh, minus one cost to the hawkins milling and rebecca is pretty good Gonna tap the Luchi and then block. Uh, like I said, it just feels bad to play the Gecko here. Not that, I'm not saying he's not going to play the Gecko here. I just think it feels kind of bad. Not gonna get a ton of value off of it, so it makes this decision like decently hard. There's just nothing you can do to kill this thing except for swing at it with the Tashigi, so uh, you're just gonna play the Gecko. Gecko back to Rebecca. Does he even play any targets for the other Gecko effect besides like Suru, Helmeppo? And then not going to use the other effect of Gecko. Um, and then Rebecca add back the Brook. I just saw a visceral, visceral reaction from Yosip. I don't know what that was about whenever he drew his card. But I don't know. Maybe top deck bonkers or something. 
Well, he already has a Dofi in his hand, so I'm like wondering like, what else you're gonna play besides Dofi here. Oh, is it another Basil? You could play another Basil. Except it puts them pretty low whenever they start. Um, whenever you do start tin dropping, and like you want to be at like decently high life whenever you are chain dropping, chain chaining tin drops because you are going to be taking some hits because your leader ability is not live. So we could go like, you know, six into Brook with leader. Uh, nine into Lucci, or like you know, six, seven into Brook. It's actually gonna Hody, okay, fair enough. Tapping the Rebecca and the Tashigi, then taking a life. That's the kind of thing that you let Bonnie do whenever you don't swing at them. Like last turn, they could have swung, um, or the turn before that, they could have swung, Gabriel could have swung eight instead of five. And then Yosef would be going down to two life instead of three right now for this Hody Jones, which just makes Hody Jones infinitely worse, um, especially in the black matchup. So that's just like, you know, something to consider. As like someone who played Bonnie for a long time, I, think, I feel like I know the weaknesses decently well. All right, they're gonna go seven into um, the Tashigi. Sorry, seven into the Brook, it dies. Seven into the Shishigi, it dies. And then eight into the Luchi, it dies. Gonna leave the Rebecca on the field, um, I assume, for like, like you can always just tap that with leader ability if you ever want to, so. Uh, but there's gonna be another Gecko coming, and it's just, once a Gecko's, once they start chaining Gecko's, and you're playing as Bonnie. What? Bro, what is up with the insane ads? Um, yeah, what I was saying was, um, once I start like doing two geckos, you're getting into pretty rough territory as the Bonnie player. Um, and then any gecko after that is probably game just because like it just gains so much value and you, Bonnie is the deck of like, I need to constantly be value, value, valuing you out of the game or I'm just gonna lose. So they're tr constantly trying to stay like, just trying to value you, they're just trying to value you. And Luchi just has a card that says value times 100 and you're just like, okay. Like I was doing really well, I was doing very good value wise against the deck up until the moment they play Gecko and then Gecko's just a value train. So you just lose all, all like tempo right there. Um, and like, you know, the, the card economy that you scrape, that you were like consistently trying to gain an edge on your opponent the whole game about, now it's just gone. Uh, so Gabriel's gonna play 10, or swing 10 into the Hawkins. Gonna use the leader ability, tap the Luchi, and then give him two 2Ks for that. Interesting number to swing their 10. Okay, so they're just gonna go Ice Age Gecko, so that's pretty good. Uh, make the Hody a two drop and then Yeah, I mean that's just so busted Not much it Bonnie can do right now And it's gonna Suru down the Hody to zero and then Brooke kill it with the uh, Rebecca Yeah, and now you got two geckos on the field two blockers and a Brooke it's like and Gabriel's still at four life Right can't really tell what the markers are. Oh, three life. Okay, they're just doing it kind of weird. Maybe I don't know. Um, no, he must be at four life because Yosip's on three life and it shows three. All right, Yosip's gonna start five into the brook. I'm gonna let that go. Okay, fair enough. Kind of a low low impact card on the field as of now and it's also just like something that can get just free stunned by Dofi. so like what's the point really not encountering out to save it or blocking to save it they're just gonna play nine drop zoro holy and that's just gonna be immediately audible of course <laughs> i mean <laughs> you're playing against lucci they're not 
they just always have it. No, but in reality, they only, I think they've only used one Ice Age, maybe two. So, like, the fact that they could have, like, Tempest Kick, Helmeppo, Ice Age, the third, fourth Ice Age, any of the four Tempest Kicks, it's, like, just super, super unlikely that they just can't out it. There's another Ice Age, though. I'm going to swing five into life so that they can uh, get off the minus one effect onto the Zora, make it an eight cost, and then uh, Yosup's going to tap the Gecko. I'm going to tap one for the um, Tempest Kick, minus three cost to the Zoro. going to make it a five cost. Gabriel's going to tap 2 for the Helmeppo, minus 3 cost to the Zoro, make it a 2 cost, and then it's going to tap 4, or no, 7 for a, a Jack to tap itself, draw a card, discard a Luchi, pop a 3 drop or less, so just immediately outing the Zoro, like I said. And it looks like he had a couple of ways to do it, so pretty nuts. But yeah, I agree with Yosip, then like, you just kind of have to make him out it at this point in time, and then hopefully your other cards later will be able to get some sort of value. Interestingly, did not swing with the nine draw or the nine K gecko. Hmm. I wonder why. But the ten drop will probably go crazy right now. Well, I guess just so he couldn't tap it with ten drop, but like. Sure. I mean, that, that is fair, so you can like, get a good swing onto the basil, I guess. Uh, gonna go five at life. Block with the Rebecca. Actually, not even gonna play the tin drop. You're gonna play another Basil Hawkins and then an Urog. Stand a Dawn up past turn. I think he just ripped an Ice Age, too, so that's pretty nice. Yeah, he did. So you can kind of see the game plan of Yosip is to try and live as long as possible and then start slamming down these 10 drops. Make Gabriel use all of his resources before um, he starts sticking the 10 drops. Put yourself in a position where you can like hopefully win if you can stun three of their cards a turn for like two turns in a row and then just swing out with 10 drops in leader. And like Gabriel just hasn't been swinging a lot, which is interesting. Gabriel's gonna play Brook just a minus one cost to the Urog, and then gonna use Jack's ability, draw one, discard one, and KO the Urog. Gonna give up the Who's Who. Okay. Now the Brook setup along with the Jack will be able to out these jet with these uh, Hawkinses potentially, but also potentially not, right? Because you have to like do one, you can't do both at the same time now. You would have to like Jack or Brook and either way one of them's gonna be standing so the Hawkins can tap one. Um, but going to swing nine with the Kaida or with the gecko and then uh Yosef's going to tap the other gecko take the life go down to two i 
and then just a big swing. Gonna take that as well, might as well. All right, and now I feel like 10 drop is about to go crazy. But I have been wrong like four times this game, so. Just gonna swing five and they're gonna take it. Seven, they're gonna block it. And then seven. They're gonna take it and then 10 drop. Freeze Gecko, Gecko, Jack, pass turn. So Jack cannot activate his ability, but Bonnie has no blockers, one life, no leader ability to two swings. Okay, so Gabriel will Tempest Kick. He's gonna draw another Tempest Kick off of that. It's pretty good. Uh, minus three to the Dofi, making it a seven cost. He has two more reductions with the Brook Lucci. So he could make it into a five cost. With the Tempest Kick in hand, he can make it into a two cost. It's just a matter of having something to kill it at that point, like a Jack or a Gecko or something. He's actually gonna Ice Age it instead, fair enough. Oh, he's gonna Ice Age the um, Basil Hawkins. Swing with the Brook. Brook kill the Basil. Is what I have to assume is uh, on the horizon. Yep, so he's gonna go five at life, minus one to the Hawkins, kill the Hawkins. Hawkins can obviously not trigger because there is no active character on the field for him to tap. Then gonna go five at life, mill two. Uh, put Dofi to six cost. Yosip's gonna give him a 2k counter for that. And then he's gonna tap. Five. Four. Four, Rebecca. <clears throat> hmm. Rebecca add to Shigi. Play Suru. Okay. So the OG Rebecca combo. And then tap, put, um, okay, pretty sick. So gonna play Rebecca off of that, um, sorry, gonna play Hina off of the Rebecca. Hina minus four cost to the Doflamingo, make it a two cost. And then gonna hard cast a Spandine, Spandine effect, summon the Luchi from the trash rested. Luchi effect. KO the two drop Doflamingo. Pretty nasty. And all of a sudden, Yosip is in a pretty bad spot. Despite having an extremely valuable Gecko. Or, geez, why do I keep mixing up the names? Uh, extremely valuable Dofi turn last turn. <clears throat> Still game one, two, and we're already 34 minutes in.
But he's gonna go five into life. So I think he's just gonna play another tin drop. Yep. He's actually gonna block with the uh, Rebecca, and then he's just gonna play Tin Drop, freeze the Gecko Gecko Jack. But does he swing at life? He has to pass turn because he's gonna have a Rob Lucci character and a Rob Lucci leader swinging his way. Only one life, not able to use our leader ability. Um, so he just has to keep that Basil up, which might just be his downfall. Um, maybe being able to swing seven there, potentially getting a life off of Gabriel. Um, and then hopefully you live next turn and kill him with the tin drop in the Bonnie leader But even then like if Gabriel feels like he's in any sort of trouble He can just start to go for game if he can't get there just play the Sabo that's in his hand and he wins so it's like You know At least this way Yosip cannot die uh, this turn He's going to swing 7 at life with the Rob Lucci character. And he's going to 0 drop, give him the Hody Jones. And then Gabriel's just going to pivot, put uh, or play Tempest Kick, minus 3 to the um, already 5 cost. Sorry. Yeah, it was 5 cost. So minus 3 to the already 5 cost. Um... No, it wasn't five cost. It was only two cost. Either way, he's going to kill with Jack. He's going to tap seven, tap Jack. Nothing to kill, or nothing to tap with Basil. So he just kills the he just kills the Hawkins. And then swings six of life, and Yossop just has to take it. And the only way out of this game is Hody Jones, seems to be. So it's kind of just so you know, an eight eight ten or a... 7, 9, 10 or something, you know, type of Hail Mary turn. Going to start 8 at life. I can't see if he has the counter or not. He definitely has a 2k, 1k. Going to take that, hit another 1k. Hody Jones, swing 8. Eight, seven, eight, nine. There it is. So that's game one. He had all counter. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, Lucci's gonna get it. And that's kind of like textbook reason why Lucci is such a bad matchup for Bonnie. I feel like is that even though <clears throat> even though Yosef played that near perfectly, I would say he played it near perfectly. Um, being able to like play that nine drop Zoro early and let. Um, gave like in a spot where you can afford for it to die and just not lose all momentum possible uh, when you're at like four lives. So he just slammed it as soon as early possible instead of like, I think most people in that position would instead try to slam like your tin drops or your eight drop core zones or your hodies or something, and then hold off Zoro for the very last card for them to out. So they don't have the out for the Zoro. Um, instead, I think in a better way to play it is Joseph or Yosip, um, Play the Zoro first, recognizing that he's gonna need the tin drops for late game to stun like the Gecko Gecko Jack and that stuff. Um, so those are just higher value cards, valuable cards, and like chances are like he's if he does just kill it um, all of your cards, then it's like you're probably losing anyway. So what's the point in holding on to the Zoro that long? I guess is another reason. So like you want to get some on play abilities later on in the game rather than early, I guess. Um, but either way, I think he played it that about as perfect as he could, and he still just lost because of all of the uh, geckos. Gecko's a crazy card. So, um, going into game two here, looks like Gabriel is going to be going first. See if they want to mulligan. Um, but yeah, I also like that play where um, he had the basil in the field, and then he went basil urug. Instead of like you know everyone else in that spot would probably just like play the dofi, like stick the dofi. I thought that was pretty smart play, just to establish another Basil. Unfortunately, Gabriel just had the outs the entire game, so it was unfortunate. But I think he like put himself in a position where he could like.
potentially win if um, Gabriel like d either doesn't have the second gecko or if like doesn't have an out to the board at any certain time. So we're going to game two. Uh, Gabriel's going to go first. Pass turn. We know he doesn't play the span dam in his deck. Yosef, jo yeah, Yosef is going to play Bonnie and a baby five. Pass turn. Double searcher turn. Just like last game, but this time two of the searchers instead of both baby five. He's going to swing five with the um, Rob Lucci leader. Going to mill two cards. And this time he's actually contemplating about countering out. I wonder what's so different about this game than last game. And then he's going to play a Brook and kill the Baby 5 because the Baby 5 can find the uh, Doflamingo Tin Drop, which is probably one of the most problematic cards um, against you, barring the uh, 6 drop Basil. Alright, this Bonnie's going to find a Cavendish. And then going to go 5 at life. Probably going to play this other Bonnie. And use the ability past turn with a Dawn up. We're going to find hopefully a Basil. No Basil. It's going to be another Cavendish. Actually an Urug. Fair enough. So a no basil game, unfortunate. Unless obviously you rip it off of life or the top deck this turn. You probably might not even be taking a life if he swings like Brook into Bonnie and then popped Bonnie. And you just tap the leader. And pretty safe time to play a Sabo here. Uh, curve out perfectly. Filter out some cards. Try to draw into Gecko, etc., etc. Jack would be a good draw. Just so you can slam it next turn. Potentially kill like an Urog, or if the Brook lives, something bigger. Like this Cavendish. Uh, but Yosef's going to play the Cavendish, get two Dawn back, and then swing seven into the Brook. Going to get a block and a 2k out of Gabriel. Gabriel's going to hit seven. I think if you want to see if you can jack this thing, you should swing five with leader first just to see if they're going to tap the Sabo or not. I feel like if you swing five or four with Brook, that's just like an auto tap the leader type deal. It's actually not going to play the Jack. He's going to minus five to the um, Cavendish with the Ice Age. Which, um, now it's just killable by Brook. So he's going to go five, tap the leader, kill the Cavendish with the Brook effect. See if he wants to take the five now. Actually, give him a 2k counter. He's gonna sit at five life. Just gonna play Hody. Fair enough why he took the counter there then. Um, deciding if he wants to put a Dawn under leader, swing like six eight. He does. So he's gonna swing six into the Brook that dies for sure. And then eight into the Sabo. Fair enough. So it does kill both monsters so that he doesn't need to use his leader ability this turn. He's going to go 6 of life, mill 2 with the Luchi and minus 1 to the Hody, making it a 6-drop. Uh, 
And I'm going to play the Tempest Kick, minus three more to the Hoodie, making it a three drop. Then playing the Jack, Jack Effect, filter a card, KO a three drop, namely the Hoodie Jones. And now Joseph is in a, or Joseph is in a pretty bad spot. Um, I can just see in their hand they have zero top end, which is not where you want to be against Lucci uh, this late in the game. Especially with no like Basil or something, he's actually just gonna swing what uh, eleven into eight K. So this only requires two two Ks from Gabriel. He's actually just gonna let it die. Play an Urog, uh, get a Dawn back past turn. Not looking good for Yosip. Because I think I did see a Gecko Moria in Gabriel's hand. As every Luchi player always has at least one Gecko Moria. Uh, Gabriel's going to swing 5 at life, minus 1 cost to the Urog, making it a jack target now. Yosip is actually going to take that. Fair enough, probably needs some cards in hand, needs cards to play, instead of just like Urogs and stuff. And now um, Gabriel's just going to play the Gecko, go plus 20. Suru, Brook, make it a uh, 1 drop and then Brook will make it a 0 drop and kill it. Last turn. Um, Yosip's just going to play this baby five. Hopefully find like a tin drop or something. But instead found all the basils that they wanted to see earlier. Just going to take a 2k here. Does have the 8 drop core zone, but I don't think they have any uh, 5 drops to play off of it, unfortunately. Yeah, that card that card is pretty mid without the 5 drop, of course, to go along with it. And Yosef literally does not have a play, really. Like, just no plays. 2k counters, zero drop events, and a core zone with no 5 drop to play off of it. And since he used the baby 5, he can't even use his leader ability. Unfortunate. Unfortunate, but that's kind of Bonnie's biggest weakness. I feel like is like it can play a ton of top end for sure, but it just doesn't have any sort of cycling ability whatsoever, which just makes it feel really bricky at times. So bad, so so bad, so that um, you just lose because you're bricked up <laughs> a lot of times whereas like decks like Luchi can play Sabo and filter um, you know Tempest Kick and filter Jack and filter um, decks like Purple Luffy can play Queen um, you know Reiju is Reiju trying to think of other you know, black yellow plays Sabo, so they can always be filtering. And just like it's just like something that the deck doesn't have. That just it's like, why? You know what I mean? Like, why is there not a card in the in the game that like? I I know like the three drop the three drop Bartolomeo, but that card sucks. Like, why is there not like a better card to help green filter cards and stuff? 
Um, but the Kaido is just going to absolutely wreck Yosup's life here. And just to put salt in the wound, he just top decked a carrot that he could have played off of the core zone last turn. I mean, he does have a 9 drop Zora that he got out of life, so that might do something. Potentially. So he's going to start 5 into the brook just to get that off the field, make it harder for Gabriel to kill him. And like, if he's just going to stick the 9 drop anyway, there's just he's probably going to win. So no need to swing at life. So he just lets that brick go. That's good for us. We're gonna play the nine drop Zoro past turn. And he just top deck to Hina. I just feel like there's zero possible way that there's like he just has an out. Like he just he's gonna have an out. They just never not have an out. I mean the whole deck's an out. It's like the whole deck is an out. Uh, he's going to start 7 out life with the Luchi leader, mill 2, and minus 1 cost to the Zoro. We'll make it an 8 cost, and we're going to be able to tap the Kaido or the Gecko with our leader ability. Yeah, probably... I don't know, maybe. I mean, we know he's not on the kid, so he can't like really afford to take this, but... I'm not seeing there's much to do. You know what I mean? I'm not seeing the out. That's kind of how I look at games in these types of situations is like games that are like, like, like there's some matchups that are like interesting because there's like certain outs to certain plays and like certain games, you have different outs and stuff. Um, but I just feel like in the Bonnie Lucci matchup, it's just always, they just always, you just never have an out. You never have an out like a viable way to win this game ever <laughs> like ever <laughs> like I said there's definitely sometimes you win you just open basil basil hoodie and you win but like yeah you're just gonna hoodie Jones and pretty much concede the game here yeah tough tough go of it for um our friend Yosef, but it is what it is. It's a bad matchup. I mean, and the way the deck's built, it's just, I feel like it's going to have an inherently bad matchup into Luchi, um, just because it's not on like the eight drop kid core zone stuff, but that's just me. Um, nevertheless, did extremely well, extremely well talented player. I think you saw in the first game how good they are with the Bonnie deck. Um, you know, Holt being very patient on playing their Doflamingos and like playing to their outs and stuff. It's just that second game. I don't think there was any opportunity to play to any outs because there just wasn't any outs. Whereas in the first game, there was outs. Um, it was an, and in like, if at any point in those last like three turns, if um, Gabriel didn't have like the perfect out to the board, then I would say Yosip might win this, that game, honestly, um, just because of the, how, how the way he played. But Either way, um, GG's um, the top eight list from Madrid, and then we'll show the top four, at least, list um, of Gabriel's pretty wild Luchi list with the Kuzan. Like, we saw the Kaido. Kaido was pretty sick. It seemed like a little win more to me, but, I mean, it is a great card for sure. It's, like, good into Nami and stuff. I'm sure it's, like, crazy into Black Yellow Luffy and that kind of thing, because it trashes and discards a card, which is like just something you need <laughs> against Black Yellow Luffy, so it might just be the best tech, better than Isho against Black Yellow, and I think Bonnie is just a unfortunate victim to the new tech, as, as it stands, um, but yeah, GG's to all those guys, make sure to subscribe to Plastic Beach X3 for more One Piece videos, and peace out.